Hi, I'm Robin Banker with Phoenix Ball Balancing. Today I'd like to introduce you to a new device called a motion table. You're going to wonder why we call it a motion table by watching this video, but if you'll stick with us in future videos, you'll completely understand. Today is going to be helpful and informative for a couple of things, but stay tuned for the real fireworks that come up later on. Enjoy. A variety of balls will be used in this video, but I want to start out by introducing you to the motion table. It is easy to construct and will be used in this video and other videos. It's basically a sheet of marble on a plywood platform and the plywood platform has four legs. Each leg is a two inch square block of wood that's glued to the bottom of the plywood. Where the two glued surfaces meet, a nut is embedded to receive a carriage bolt that extends out the bottom. The carriage bolts can be screwed in or out to level the motion table. After the motion table has been leveled, lock nuts like the one shown here can be used to keep the carriage bolts from moving. When leveling the motion table, please take great care in making sure that the table is level no matter where you put the level in all directions. When leveled properly, the cohesive properties of water will make it beat up and not run off the motion table. Now let's use the motion table for Bob's demonstration. If the CG is facing you and placed at the equator, the ball will roll toward you. If the CG is placed to the right, the ball will roll to the right. If the CG is placed away from you, the ball will roll away from you. And if the CG is placed to the left, the ball will roll to the left. In fact, no matter where you put the CG on the equator, the ball will roll in that direction. What happens if I put the CG right on top of the ball? On the motion table? The ball doesn't roll. And it also would not roll if the CG had been put on the bottom of the ball. Just in case you're wondering, we'll repeat the process with a ball that has an asymmetric core. The core has nothing to do with the rotation of the ball on this motion table. The ball will always roll toward the CG. Now I'm going to put the CG on top of the ball, but to save time, I'm going to run the video a little faster. As was true with the symmetric core ball, this ball will not roll if the CG is placed directly above or below the geometric center of the ball. Neither the location of the core nor the pin plays any part in this movement of the ball. In these two examples, we've already known where the CG was located. What if we didn't know where the CG was, for example, in a drill ball? We can just reverse the idea and say, wait a minute, if we can move that ball so it's balanced, it does not roll on this motion table, then either the CG is on top of the ball or on the bottom of the ball, and from context, we should be able to tell which it is. 
Now let's try this method on a drilled ball. Place the ball on the motion table in a position where maybe it's a good guess where the CG is. Put that on top. Release the ball and see if it rolls. If it rolls, pull the ball back to the release point and just slightly more in the opposite direction. Try to get that CG up on top. So pull it back farther than the original release position and keep doing that until finally, if you have a balanced table and you're very careful, you'll be able to get the CG directly on top of the ball. Almost had it. Try it one more time. Finally, we found the CG is on this location of the ball. The process is the same for an asymmetric core drilled ball, which I will demonstrate now. The method is the same. Rotate the ball until the ball is stationary and the top point on the ball will then be the CG of the drilled ball. And there is the location of the CG. Although interesting, this is not a very practical way to find the CG. A better way would be to use our software. Let me show you how to do that in about 30 seconds. The section of the software that allows you to find the CG is located up here under calculations. We're going to click calculations tab and uh, the current side finger and top weights are listed over here on the left hand side. We're going to start with a side weight of 0.5. I'll press tab to move down. Current finger weight we'll say is 0.3 tab and the current top weight is 1.2. Notice below those current values are what you want to end up with. The desired side weight, we want to be zero, and the same for the finger, and same for the top. So in other words, in order to get side finger top zeroed out, where would we have to go on the ball to do that? And if we go down to the bottom, the middle section for drill balls, and click uh, customer specifies final weights, the final weights are specified on the left as 0, 0, 0. I'm going to click that, and on the output screen on the right-hand side, we see the instructions from the center of grip move horizontally 1 and 11 sixteenths inches. From that point, move vertically 1 inch, and that will be the location of the CG. That's where the CG is marked on the ball. Technically, the CG is between that point and the center of the ball. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it entertaining and useful. We're going to link CG to balls in motion in a couple of future videos, so stay tuned. See you later.